Hey YouTube, welcome to my dual Mac, dual monitor setup of 2022. I know I did a setup tour maybe about a month ago, but I've made some big changes and I wanted to share it with you guys. I personally have been a long time PC user and recently I've jumped onto the Apple ecosystem. So with my changing needs, I needed something portable like the MacBook Pro 14. I also use a Mac mini for my more permanent setup and the seamless integration between the Mac mini and the MacBook Pro 14 made it just that much easier when I'm going through my workflow, something the PC couldn't do for me. After getting my MacBook Pro 14, the only real use for my PC was for gaming. Now with work, school, and my other activities, I don't have time for gaming anymore. So I decided to retire my PC and try out the Mac for about 30 days. And let's finally check out the new setup. The first thing you'd really notice are the two monitors that I have. My main monitor is an Alienware 34 inch ultra wide. It's a great gaming monitor, but since I do little of that now, it mostly serves as having multiple windows open up at one time. The 21 by nine aspect ratio makes editing videos a lot easier because I can expand Premiere Pro and the timeline is a lot longer compared to a 27 inch monitor. And then to my left, I have an Acer Predator 27 inch monitor. It basically just acts as extra desktop space. I usually put Spotify, Discord, or any other extra content that I'd be referring to. And to get that semi floating effect, I do have both of these monitors on monitor arms. They're nothing really fancy, but they are extremely affordable. I'm pretty sure the gas strut arm holding my main monitor was only $50. And the Vivo arm holding my Acer monitor was I think $30 when I bought it. By the way, I'll definitely link everything that I'm talking about in this video in the description below. With these monitor arms, I do try to utilize the cable management clips and guards so I can clean up the clutter a little bit around my desk. And speaking of clutter, I do have all my cables hooked up to this Thunderbolt hub. Now, stay tuned for a review on this useful hardware. It's a great little hub that has all the parts that I need. And the only real downside that I could find is the heat if I have it hooked up to both monitors at the same time. Currently, it's connected to my Mac mini. And since the Mac mini has an M1 chip, it can't work with dual monitors from one Thunderbolt cable. So I also have it hooked up through HDMI to display on my vertical monitor. Moving on, of course, the heart of the setup, I've got the M1 Mac mini along with my MacBook Pro 14 inch. Currently, I don't have the MacBook Pro hooked up, but when I need it, I would just unhook the Thunderbolt cable from the Mac mini and plug it into the MacBook. This will display the MacBook on my main monitor and the Mac mini on my vertical monitor. But the best part though, is with universal control. I can still operate both my MacBook Pro and my Mac mini with one keyboard and one mouse. I can even transfer files between devices using a single pair of peripherals. That's pretty cool, right? For general browsing and script work, I use the Mac mini. And when I need extra power, like video editing or emulating Windows, I plug in my MacBook Pro. It's as easy as pulling one cable out of the Mac mini and putting it into the MacBook Pro. And I'm good to go. Also connected to the Thunderbolt hub, I have a USB 3.0 hub routed underneath my desk. It connects any dongle or external hard drives that I might need, as well as my DAC, which are connected to my bookshelf speakers. These Edifier speakers have decent sound to them. I'd say compared to other bookshelf speakers, they're more on the budget side, but they get the job done for me. I do really want to get some acoustic foam for them because when it gets loud, I can definitely feel the vibrations on my desk. I also think it fits very well into my overall black and white theme. Moving on to more of my peripherals, I'm rocking the MX Keys Mini for Mac and the Razer Orochi V2. They're both wireless, which means it removes any wire clutter from the top of my desk. I do have mechanical keyboards, but personally, my wrists feel a lot better not needing a wrist rest when I'm typing, but that's just me. On my desk, I also have a bunch of little accessories that help with my workflow and the overall aesthetic. I have this marathon clock to, you know, tell the time. I also have a mug of pens to, you know, hold my pens. And then I have these Star Wars coasters to play with when I'm bored. I'm just playing. They protect my desk from any of the beverages that I might be drinking. I also have these black sticky notes for when I need to write down a quick reminder or quote. And to give my desk a little bit of life, I have a fake plant to give some green vibes, you know, 
those green vibes. And I also have a real plant to give me some of that natural oxygen for days when I can't go out and I need to touch some grass. And of course, a little Star Wars Funko Pop to give the desk a little bit of personality and show off my love for Star Wars. Now, in terms of lighting, I do have a Govi light bar. You can even see it right behind me. And three Hue Play light bars. They're absolutely perfect for setting whatever kind of mood I'm feeling. Now, all of the stuff that I've talked about so far rests on top of this desk. I've talked about this desk in my other videos and did a review. It's an IKEA countertop paired with the autonomous sit-stand desk. The cable management underneath is not the best, but I'm happy with it. It also keeps the clutter below under control. And where I sit for most of my day, the ergo chair by Autonomous as well. And no, I'm not sponsored. I just like their product. I figured I'd get a chair to help with proper posture if I'd be sitting here for long hours. Now that's my current dual monitor, dual Mac setup of 2022. Let me know what you guys think. Yay or nay for my desk setup. If you found any value in this video, feel free to subscribe and stay tuned for the next one.